Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Congregational Church of Bellingham. My name is Davi. I use they, them pronouns. It's so good to have you all with us this morning, whether you're joining us here in the sanctuary or joining us on the bigger balcony from home or work or wherever we find you. It's so good to have you all with us. Um, thanks for being here. I have a few announcements to share as uh, we begin our worship. Um, Welcome um, to Carolyn Canfield, who's going to join Judy a couple of times um, playing this morning. Um, and they ask that um, for the uh, music for contemplation coming up, after they play, they invite you to uh, not applaud. Um, if you're seized by overwhelming gratitude for their music, um, please channel that into loving your neighbors um, or whatever you like. Um, oh, yes. Okay. Um, uh, I got distracted by the dog being here. I'm not going to lie. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. So good to have you. Welcome to your hearing dog. Yes. Um, uh, let's see. Um, on February the 8th, which is a Tuesday, I'll be going down um, with at least a Lutheran or two um, to Olympia for the Faith Action Network Advocacy Day. If you'd like to come down and get a great introduction or refresher into what it's like to um, have important advocacy conversations with your state legislature, legislators um, or, or, and, and to have those conversations, um, I would love to uh, drive you down. Um, we need to register folks this week, so if you can let me know by tomorrow at noon if you'd like a spot in my car. Um, let's see. Also coming up... Oh. Uh, coming up at the end of this service, uh, we are going to take an offering in this service, as we almost always do. Uh, this week, we're going to try again having the ushers with plates in the back as you leave. So if you want to leave a cash offering or a check offering, that way you can. And there's online offering um, opportunities uh, noted in your bulletin there. Um, the congregational uh, annual meeting is uh, Sunday, February the 11th. Um, that's two weeks from today, I'm like pretty sure. Um, so I want to invite you all to that, important conversations about budget, about some uh, reimagining for how our, how our church works together as well. Um, and also Sunday, February 4th, uh, which now I'm positive is next Sunday, um, there's a meeting in the sanctuary after worship to talk through some of the proposals that are going to be coming. So I hope that um, you'll prayerfully discern about whether you're feeling called to be there. The last announcement is this, and it's the most important. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, whether this is your first time arriving, or you haven't been here in a while, or you're here all the time, whether you have two legs or four legs, no matter who you are, you are welcome in this place. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God. Let's share worship together. We have such a story this week. I can't wait to tell it and talk about it. So Jesus goes across the Sea of Galilee to the other side where there's a big community of non-Jewish folks and nearby there's a graveyard and in the graveyard there's a person who is in a place of wildness. His friends have tried to chain him up, and even that doesn't work. He breaks the shackles, and he roams among the tomb, getting hurt and wailing. 
Now, from our contemporary eyes, it's easy to see this story as being about perhaps mental illness, or see it as being about the kind of demon that we see in spooky movies that I'm still not old enough to watch. Um, but I want to invite us to come to this story from the place of the original tellers of this story. Maybe it's not a story about mental illness. Maybe it's not a story about exorcism in the holy water spooky movie kind of sense. Maybe there's some other kind of healing happening when this person who's in a wild state sees Jesus. They come running over and they say, Son of the Most High God, stay away from me. Jesus asks the name of this spirit. And the Spirit says, my name is Legion, for we are many. Now that's good terrain for spooky movies, but it's not a coincidence, I think. It would not have been a coincidence for the original hearers of this story to hear my name is Legion. Legion, of course, being a unit of Roman troops in a region that was entirely occupied by legions of Roman troops. I'm told a legion is 2,000 soldiers. So the Spirit says, don't send me away. And Jesus says, okay, I'll send you into this, this flock of pigs. Uh, yeah, exactly. Again, flock, not usually the word for pigs, but it is a word used for soldiers in those days, for a group of soldiers. And there's, you guessed it, exactly 2,000 pigs. They go into the pigs, the pigs run into the sea, it's all wild. When the uh, caretakers of the pigs come back to see what's happened, they find our friend who's been wandering in the tombs in their right mind, clothed, hanging out with Jesus. In fact, in fact, our friend wants to go along with Jesus, and Jesus says, no, stay, tell this story in your city and the other cities nearby. What a story. What a story indeed. Now is the time for all the kids to come forward so that we can continue the story. We have pillows here. We also have a uh, piano cover that I think we can move. And uh, we're going to continue this story here because I don't like watching some of those movies either. They're pretty scary. How many, how many legs does that have? Uh, I was just wondering how many legs your uh, friend has there. I mean, it could be a lobster or something. Two on the penguin, two on the flamingo. Ah, okay. So that's four total. Yeah. So Davi told a story about a man who was in a very wild state. Have any of you ever found yourselves in a wild state? Have you ever gotten angry at anybody? Yes. yes. I know, I know, I still get angry when I try to untie my shoes and uh, it turns into a knot. <laughs> That's, That's the worst, yeah, well, sometimes. That's why I don't have shoes that you need to tie. That's why they invented them, yes. So, and sometimes we get angry about things that we really shouldn't get angry about, like, you know, somebody got more ice cream than I did. 
Or in my case, my brother once told me that I had to do something that I wanted to do, but I certainly didn't want him telling me to do it. And sometimes we get so angry, we get wild. Screaming and yelling and rolling around on the floor and making sure. I've rolled around on the floor like ever. Well, but I'm sure you know some people who have. But the thing is that when we get wild like that, that means that we need to change something about ourselves. And what is it that makes you not angry anymore? I know, I know deep breaths helps. I know figuring out how to untie the knot in my shoe helps. I know uh, sometimes when I'm really angry about some things, talking to other people helps. And it's also true that there are some things that you should be angry about, like kids in your school who can't have anything to eat, or people like our wild man living in the tombs who don't have a place to stay. So it really helps to talk to people about that, talk to adults, talk to other kids. And this is one of the things that Jesus wants for us, is to acknowledge our anger, to get help with it, and pass it on to something that won't get hurt by it, unlike those poor pigs. Yeah. So let's have a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for helping us through our anger, helping us to get rid of the things that keep us from moving forward. We thank you for giving us the ability to love one another and to share that love with each other. Amen. And now you can go and go back to your parents or go with Josh out to the school.
beautiful. Now, can we please rise in body or spirit and join in the communal prayer? In our moments of terror, may we learn we are not alone. In our moments of despair, may we learn that the story continues. In our moments of utter confusion, may we wait together for wonder. And when we are most outside ourselves, may the Spirit call us home. I invite you to be seated, settle in however you're comfortable, and join now um, in this time of shared prayer. This is the sound of our prayers, and the Spirit intercedes for us, with sighs, with sighs too deep for words. 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 With sighs. We come now to a time of prayer to share together. In a moment, I'll invite folk who are gathered here to share what they're praying for so that we may join them in those prayers. But know also, whether or not you're called to speak, your prayers are held here, however complicated, however simple, however nameable or not. As we begin, I want to invite prayers this week for all of those who grieve. Pray especially for the Slagle family after the death this week of Mona Slagle's mom, Teresa. And we pray um, for the family of D.C. Moore, who passed away this week. We pray also for those who are experiencing flooding even now or preparing for flooding elsewhere in our county and in our region. 
What else is there to pray with each other? For Deanna's grandson, Noah, traveling around Vietnam on a school trip. Amazing. We pray for survivors of sexual assault, incest, and other kinds of sexualized violence. We pray that they will be filled with courage and healing, and pray for all of those who work with and care for them, especially that they would all know freedom from the shame and guilt that can come with that kind of violence. I lift up prayers for places of violence, especially Israel and Palestine in these days. Pray that God will bring peace, comfort, and healing. Thank you. We lift up the Kids in the Bellingham School District and other districts, I'm sure, who are in the midst of finals this week. May they find comfort and courage and creativity in the midst of stressful days. Praise for, pr prayers for the uh, elders in our midst and other folks who are aging, that we might have humor and grace as we age. Amen. I invite you now to join me in prayer and share in the prayer of Jesus. God, you who hold us in silence. We offer up all of the prayers gathered today, here in person and scattered throughout our region, spoken out loud and carried in our hearts like precious treasures. God, we offer all of these prayers to you. Prayers for healing when we are at our most dangerous, when we are least ourselves, when we are most in need of care. God, we offer these prayers and so many others in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray like this. Our Creator, who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the sound of our prayers, and the Spirit intercedes for us with sighs, with sighs too deep for words. With sighs, with sighs too deep for words. With sighs, with sighs.
eyes to deeper words. With sighs, with sighs to deeper words. This week's scripture reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. And this is from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. <clears throat> they came to the other side of the sea, to the region of Genesis. And when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, Immediately, a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. Now, this man lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him anymore, even with a chain. For he had often been restrained with shackles and chains, but the chains he wrenched apart, and the shackles he broke in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs and the mountains, he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and, and he bowed down before him. And he shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. Jesus then said to him, had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirits. But then Jesus asked him, what is your name? The man replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. He begged Jesus earnestly not to send the spirits, not to send the spirits out of the region. Now there on a hillside, there was a great herd of swine, and they were feeding, and the unclean spirits then begged Jesus and said, oh, Send us into the swine, let us enter them. Jesus gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. And the swine, numbering about 2,000, stampeded down the steep banks and into the sea and were drowned in the sea. Well, the swine herders ran off, and they told this story in the city and in the country. And when people came to see what it was that had happened, they came to Jesus and saw the man who had been possessed by demons. He was sitting there clothed and in his right mind. And the very man who had had the legions, and they became afraid. Those who had seen what had happened to the man possessed by the demons and to the swine reported it. Then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by the demons begged Jesus that he might be with him. But Jesus refused and said to him, go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown for you. So the men went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, the actions of our lives be acceptable to you, our strength and our liberator. In Jesus' name, amen.
It's always funny to me, I think. Maybe funny is not the right word, but what I remember about that time is how much my shins hurt just all the time. To be running wild there among the tombs in that wild place with the wildness inside me that had nowhere to land. I fell down a lot. I got hurt a lot. And sometimes I think my neighbors came and chained me there for their own safety and sometimes for mine and sometimes because they were afraid. But nothing they ever tried to chain me with worked. Not for very long. Something about what was happening to me, what had a hold of me, was too much. And I would find myself just standing amid some broken chains, more bruises, little cuts up and down my legs. I think you can only understand if it's ever happened to you. But even if you can't understand, you can hear and that something. A day came. And I will go to my tomb not knowing what was special about that day. Maybe it was who came by. Maybe it was the friends and neighbors that had gathered the night before. Maybe I was just that tired or that bruised or that out of options. But when I saw Jesus, I found myself at his feet. I don't know if you've ever approached anyone or anything with that kind of desperation and reverence. That's when things changed for me, not right away, not irretrievably. There's still plenty of wildness in me, but more and more I am learning that the wildness is not just for me, it's for my friends and neighbors, because we're in some kind of trouble and we need some kind of wildness, but not the kind that bruises our own bodies. Where I grew up, there were only white people. That's not true, of course. But that was the story. The people in the community where I grew up who weren't white had trouble for it. And the people like me who did grow up white never had to trouble their poor, confused white bodies about it. So when I began to learn about what the clutches of white supremacy were doing to my community, had done to my body and my heart and my soul, there was a wildness in me. I wanted to fix it right away, to say, 
get behind me? To claim some kind of radical healing right then? And I've read books. And I uh, talked to my friends about it, and I joined the study groups, and I... That was all good, but it felt like I was chaining that part of myself back, and it would just keep breaking out. Breaking out in the way that I saw my neighbors, in the way I saw myself, in where I claimed my own worth. And more and more I saw it wasn't just white supremacy. It was colluding with patriarchy and homophobia and classism. Legion. In a way, nothing changed the day that I decided that by myself I was powerless. In a way, nothing changed the day when I let the anger in and invited it to teach me. In a way, nothing changed the day when I turned to my friends, to my teachers, to my beloved, and said, this is too much for me and my little heart and soul and body. But in another way, everything changed. Because they said, Let's see what we can do with these demons together. I wonder what we will remember from that day. From that day when we as a community, as a congregation, as neighbors, claim for ourselves and each other that this wildness inside of us, this panic inside of us, this fear of change or this habit of scarcity or this love of things that don't actually feed us. I wonder what it will feel like. And I wonder what we will remember when we as a beloved community once again and for the very first time throw whatever troubles us down at the patient feet of Jesus who can't wait another second and say, this is who we are. It's too much for us to do alone. Set us free. Will we learn on that day that wildness and freedom are friends? That anger and generosity walk hand in glorious hand? That love and justice do not bruise our bodies, but rather set a table for all of us and for the whole world. I don't even know if it's going to be the same day for all of us or if it'll be one at a time. Jesus is tricky like that.
But as much as I can say that I've heard that story from Mark chapter 5, and it doesn't sound like mental illness, and it doesn't sound like a spooky demon movie, it sounds like the truth. And I think that day is coming. May it be so. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name's Nancy Fahram, and I'm a member of the Green Team. And this morning, we're going to have our fourth creation care ritual, testimony followed by dropping a marble in a container, records our commitment to our common home. Listen to the witnessing. Listen to the sound the marble makes as it plunks. Now, you may be wondering, well, why a marble? 
the iconic 1972 blue marble photograph taken by Apollo 17 sparked the need for sustainable development to care for our planet. The image quickly became a symbol of the early envir environmental movement and was adopted by activist groups such as Friends of the Earth and annual events such as Earth Day. And now let us begin. Created in the image of God, we are called to care for creation in ways large and small, to celebrate the actions of our community towards a sustainable and just future for all. We are blessed by stories and symbols of ongoing work for creation justice and our commitment to God's future. And first we'll hear from Jana. So my name's Jana and I'm a vegetarian. Um, and for me, not eating meat is about stewardship. It's a way to take care of God's creation. 18% of global greenhouse gas emissions come from the meat industry. When I make the choice not to eat meat, I do it because I want to limit my carbon footprint. Climate change is doing so much to our Earth. It's increasing sea levels and acidity, causing drier summers and wetter winters, taking away environments that animals need to survive, and we humans are causing it. I have been a vegetarian since I was three years old. My parents let me decide if I wanted to eat meat at preschool since we never had it at home. I ate it a couple of times and my parents have told me that I really loved dino nuggets. <laughs> I ate a, um, but once I learned where meat comes from, I stopped eating it. That's because I've always loved animals. From the birds, rabbits, and deer I watch hopping around in my backyard to the chickens that I keep as pets, I see animals as living, breathing pieces of God's creation, and I don't want them slaughtered for my consumption. Thank you. Go ahead and plunk a marble. Thank you. Good morning. I'm tackling the back of the closet things that are falling apart. Yes, mending. There are socks and sweaters to darn, uh, seams that have opened, and also opportunities for making something new from something old, like my husband's old long ski socks that I can cut off the foot and make them into leg warmers for me. When I do something small like that, I find it's interwoven. It's interwoven with other things in my life and with other green things. And I, um, just to give you an example, um, what I save from keeping my clothes um, mended is uh, I can redeploy that money into things that matter more to me. Um, so the other part of interwoven is that, a f um, for instance, I have the thermostat down um, daytime at, at home, and it takes woolens at my age to keep me warm. Uh, and woolens are expensive, and so by uh, mending them, I, um, I can also use less um, of my furnace. Uh, Earthwise, of course, if I'm, um, buy, if I'm wearing something for 10 years instead of two, um, then there's, there's less, um, you know, toxic dyes going into waterways. Uh, uh, I'm not buying cotton that um, was conventionally grown with pesticides. And, and, and landfill, of course, we know that, and other things. But... Um, there's also a, a spiritual side, because you, you may know I, I write, and that has me in ideas and kind of gets out of body at, at a while. If I'm mending, I'm taking care of things, I, um, I get more tactile, and I feel more grounded and calmer, and, and that's really good for me spiritually. So... This, this, I, what I like when I do buy something new, I buy a lot, buy a lot of used, um, I can support some 
but a local like the uh, owner of texture clothing. And, and um, what I pay um, is, uh, well, it's, it's for hemp and organic cotton, and, I, um, and it's local. And I, I love that, so I love every time I wear a skirt from her. Jean, Jean, come on back. <laughs> We're now going to read the creation prayer that's in your bulletin, and I will read with the, all of you the words in all caps, and Jana and Jean will read the rest of the text. Creator God, who multiplies blessings, bless these symbols and the actions they represent as we join with you to heal and protect our planet from pollution and destruction. Help us to set aside the desire for material riches, opening our hearts to the myriad life forms around us and the rich beauty of this planet that we hold dear. Guide us as we learn to make sustainable changes in our everyday lives. And bless the scientists, researchers, activists, and advocates for climate justice as they multiply the blessings we offer. We pray in awe of the life and the beauty of this planet that we call home. Amen. Thank you.
Before our benediction, I just want to name that I, um, as I was preparing for the service, I saw a lot of folk arrive that I didn't recognize or that I haven't seen in a while. So it's going to be more than I can greet, so everybody just has to greet everybody. That's where we're at. Um, so just assume that someone sitting next to you is really cool and you maybe haven't met them yet. So just take that as advisement. And hear this sending prayer. God who meets us in our times of deepest wounding, of highest desperation, of biggest fear. Meet us once again, wherever you find us today, and bring us strength, and bring us healing, and bring us liberation, that we might share it with everybody. In Jesus' name, amen.